Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Dr. Jeff Taylor, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as a superintendent of the Norman School District. Joining me this evening uh, are Assistant Superintendent Dr. McCracken, Director of Special Education Student Services Dr. Snyder, Middle School Principal Mr. Suman, Middle School Assistant Principal Mr. Collier, Coordinator of Educational Programs and Services Ms. Harris, Hillcrest Principal Mr. O'Neill, Hillcrest Assistant Principal Ms. Banasek, Norman Teachers. Mrs. Navy and Mrs. Bryan, and our representative from the Westmoreland Intermediate, Mrs. Henderson. I'd like to make um, everyone aware that we are recording this uh, recording tonight and uh, to capture all the questions and answers so that we can put that on our website. The purpose of the meeting is to answer questions regarding the middle school and Hillcrest portion of the Norwin Online Academy, our fully online virtual school. Please know we will not be discussing the reopening of schools plan at this time. In order to decrease the background noise, I'm going to mute everyone. We will begin with a brief presentation and then provide opportunities for questions and answers. When you want to ask a question, please click the participants button and then you're going to see a little button that's the raise hand icon. Click the raise hand icon and we will then uh, address your questions at that time. So at this time, I'm, we're going to start our presentation and I'm going to uh, share my screen here. And uh, Ms. Harris will begin the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Welcome everyone to the Norwin Online Academy presentation for grades five through eight. Um, this is an exciting time um, for everyone. So what I wanna start with first is just an overview of um, where we've come from with the Norwin Online Academy. Um, it's had former names. At first it was the 21st Century Learners went to the Norwin E Academy, and now it is officially the Norwin Online Academy. We've been in existence for about 12 years now. We did start out just as a secondary program, but we have expanded to encompass grades K through 12. Last year, we did have a total of over 125 students enrolled part-time and full-time. With this program, we do partner with the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit, the E Academy is for the 12 through, or for the 6 through 12, and the Accelerate Learning encompasses primarily the K to 5, which we'll talk a little bit about for the fifth graders, and, but it does also provide instruction, the Accelerate Learning for K to 12 now. The benefits of the Norwin um, Academy are extreme. There's a lot of them. Um, we've pulled out the ones that we thought were most important. Um, I'm not going to read them all to you. You can see them on the screen, but the main ones, your child remains a Norwin student. You don't have to withdraw them, and when you come back, you don't have to re-enroll them. They stay a student of Norwin. Um, what that means is, is they can participate in anything that a student from Norwin can participate in. They can do sports, clubs, they will participate in graduation. They can go to prom. Anything that happens as a Norwin student, they can participate. Um, with the online academy, you can also maintain, you do also maintain your guidance counselor. So things at the building that the student, resources that the students have are still available to students who are on the online academy. So they still have their guidance counselor. Um, whoever their guidance counselor was last year, they remain their guidance counselor. They can call them at any time. They can come in and see them. They also have access to counselors for social and emotional health and well-being. Um, as a high school student, they have the ability to attend w or CWCTC. So you can read through. There's a lot of things. The curriculum is robust. Um, lots of reasons why you want to stay with the Norwin Online Academy. Registration process for this is very simple. The first thing is the parent, all you have to do is you're going to complete the parent pre-registration orientation form. That is found on the Norwin website. If you go to un, under the toolbar, you go to academics, you would then go to Norwin Online Academy, and then you're gonna click on parent pre-registration orientation form. You complete that form, please only complete it once. I do have parents who do it multiple times. You do not get a confirmation that it was received. So only complete it once. If you'd like to call and ask, have I received it? Please do, but you do not have to fill it out multiple times. Um, once it is filled out, it does come to me. 
I forward it then to the student's counselor. The counselor then is notified that this child, the student, wants to do the online academy. Once they are doing schedules, they will reach out to the student for course selection. And then the courses are put together. They have, they stay on target for what they would have for this year. And that's when the, the student then is registered for the online courses. The course selection. Now this is where we're gonna differentiate a little bit. Um, so parents, if you are a fifth grade parent, a parent of a fifth grader, how about that? If you're a parent of a fifth grader and online tonight, your child is going to be in the Accelerate Learning Program. And that's one platform that we're using. Students who are in six to 12, you are in the, most of the courses come from the E Academy, but there are also courses in Accelerate Learning, mostly honors and AP courses that the students can, can use. So again, you wanna differentiate between the two. If you're a fifth, parent of a fifth grader, you're gonna be in the Accelerate Learning, if you are six to 12, you may, your child may be in both of those programs. This, com oh, can we go back? Thank you. Combination of core courses and electives are selected from each of the catalogs. A student can carry a maximum of 7.5 credits online. And for that, we pick that number because that's what a student can carry in school. Um, AP courses and honors courses are available, and that's why we have expanded the Accelerate Learner learning to the older students. And the course catalogs have not completely been finished at this point, but we are looking at getting the new eAcademy course catalog available very soon. They're doing a, a new format um, that's going to be a lot more parent-friendly and teacher-friendly for us to schedule the kids. And the Accelerate Learner catal learning catalog hopefully will be able, uh, available by the end of the week. I have gotten a glimpse at it as well. There was one little glitch, so we don't wanna put it out there with a glitch. So I'm hoping by the end of the week that that will also be on our homepage. Teacher assignments. The way we assign teachers um, follows these three steps. The E-Academy is taught by Norwin teachers. What that means is in the e-academy, our teachers have actually created courses. These courses have been created mostly by teachers um, and by the framework of what they're teaching in their classroom. So that pretty much would follow what a teacher in Norwin is doing in their classroom. So those are the courses that we pick first for our students. If we can't find the course in e-academy, then we would go to Accelerate Learner. And again, right now for me to distinguish, this is for grades six to 12. So the first one is E Academy with Norwin teachers. The second one would be the Accelerate Learning with Norwin teachers. The third one that we would go to if we can't find one with a Norwin teacher, but there is a course that a student wants to take or needs to take, then we would go back to the E Academy and we would select a teacher from Westmoreland County who is also employed within the E Academy. Now, if we go back, teacher assignment, and let's talk fifth graders. Fifth graders are going to be assigned, they're gonna start with number two. Their teachers are going to come from Accelerate Learning. So there's a little bit of a difference there. With the first one we would go to for fifth grade would be the Accelerate Learning. Then we would go back to the E Academy, Westmoreland County teachers. The role of the online teacher. Um, it's a big role. Um, the teachers wear so many hats in the classroom and we know that, and we don't think of all those hats online, but they have just as many hats online. Um, if not, sometimes maybe more because it's, it's a challenge. You have to reach kids that aren't there for you to reach, to touch out and reach. Um, so what you need to do is you have to wear more hats. So if you look here, you've got nine, nine ways that we have put together, a big brother, a co-learner, they're a coach. So these are all the things that a teacher online does for their students. You cannot think of these teachers as someone who puts out work and corrects it. It is so much more than that. There is a connection. They talk with the parents. They have a relationship with the students. So there is a lot that goes into being an online teacher. <coughs> the technology. Um, families that do not have a computer or Wi-Fi, 
we can provide you um, with both of those at no cost. Most home computers though are compatible. Um, again, I've been doing this program for about six years. A lot of parents use their computer at home or they'll talk to me that they're worried that it's an older computer. And I can tell you that I've never had a family tell me that their computer was not compatible. So if you do have a computer, we do encourage the kids to use the one that they have at home. But if you do not have one available, we can provide you one at no cost. We have also put out on the website under um, parent and student information under the Norman Online Academy, there is a spec sheet. I've had a lot of parents call me, they wanna go out and buy computers for their children and they wanna know what needs to be on it. Um, so I talked to the tech people and they put together a sheet and it can be printed right off so that you can take it wherever you're going to get the computer and know exactly what the specific specs for this program would be. But again, I've told you um, pretty much any computer that's been at home has been compatible with what the students needed. Delivery of instruction. I'm gonna to get to take a step back right now and we have two guests with us. We have Mrs. Navy and Mrs. Henderson. Mrs. Navy is going to, to show you first. She has been a Norwin teacher. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit, I'm gonna give her a little introduction and some props for as long as the academy has been open. So she's evolved with this academy, academy online um, academy. Um, so she has seen where it's come and where it's going, and she's going to share with you one of her courses so that you can see a little bit of the design of her course and what the students may see. Okay? Mrs. Nevy. Okay. Um, just so you know, I have been with the district for 16 years now, and I've been teaching at the E-Academy for probably over 12, and I love it, or I would never have kept doing this for 12 years. Um, I actually got my master's degree online, so I really enjoy not only the learning process, but I also enjoy um, just teaching in an online environment. So this is my biology course. Basically, it's nice because the format is the same for all of the courses. So when the students get to see this, it does look the same um, for each course. So I'm going to show you just one lesson on here, and then I'll, I'll show you different things. Like in the classroom where I differentiate instruction, I differentiate instruction online too. So typically when the students come in, um, they'll see a brief overview of their lesson for the week and then some notes. Now these are all narrated and the one reason that I love the narrated notes and unfortunately you won't be able to hear them on the Zoom call is that I can go through and I can make sure that each slide is perfect whenever I record it. So if I make a mistake, if I have too many ums, um, I actually go back and re-record each slide. So <laughs> I try to keep these about 10 minutes. Um, sometimes they do go a little over, sometimes they go a little under, but these are my actual slides that I would use to teach this class at Norwin. So they're identical. And just while this video is loading, for my course, I'm usually within a week of my brick and mortar students. So if students choose to do the Norwin Online Academy, they're going to stay right on pace um, pretty close to what we would typically see in a normal classroom. So that would be a, an example of the notes. I have definitions and flashcards. I have them a couple different ways and I'll show you each. So this would just be a listing of the definitions. The students would run through a scenario and be able to answer the questions. So there's some questions down at the bottom. The next slide provides the answers and they're color coded so that they can see where each answer came from in the scenario. I have readings for each week. Um, these come through our flex books. So these provide um, information that they can go back to at any time. They also have links to other websites and YouTube videos if they, so, if they need it to just explain it a little more. And the last thing that I'll show you is what a typical assignment would look like in my class. So this would be the assignment. It mimics what they saw in the notes. It mimics what they saw in the example. And then the students would go and they would type in their answer um, down at the bottom. It's not set to open right now, um, but they would have a box that they would type their answer into. And it comes to me, I grade stuff, it depends. Usually Saturday morning at five o'clock in the morning is my normal grading time. 
Um, I like to sit down and grade everything in one big chunk, but I do answer emails continuously through the week. Um, I get emails sometimes at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, so that's, you know, something that I've been accustomed to. So I, my schedule, usually I get to work at least a half an hour early every day um, to get some of those nighttime emails caught up. I answer them on my prep period through the day. And then um, whenever I get home at night, I'll grade some stuff as too, if it's if it's late work or you know a student needed some extra time on something or needed to redo an assignment um, all those things I would take care of at night um, the other couple things that I want to show you I do have labs in here they are virtual labs so this would be an example of a virtual pH lab that my students would do there are questions that they would answer as they go through the lab and I have these a couple different ways they can obviously use um, the actual website and I have them recorded so that they can see me going through the lab as well and kind of work their way through. So this would be an example of a virtual lab and they can work their way through. The last thing um, that I wanted to show you, let me go back up, is that I do review games as well with the students. So just because they can't do them in class doesn't mean that they won't have them at all. Let me pull up one of the review games. So the students have things that can help them to um, be able to go through and actually do a review game like I would typically do in class. The last and thing that we have is, um, I just wanted to show you one other option for vocab that's a little bit more interactive. Next slide. The students can actually um, match these up as a vocab review. So this is with Quizlet, it's just a little bit of a different way. Um, if there's any questions, there will be a question and answer period at the end, I'd be happy to to show you or answer any questions that you have regarding this, um, but that is what the course format typically looks like for eAcademy. Super, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, now we're gonna move on. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, Mrs. Henderson. Um, she is from the IU, she is in charge of the eAcademy, and she's gonna give you an overview of the Accelerate Learning and the asynchronous and synchronous learning. Thank you. Let me go ahead and share my screen for you. So we're going to start by looking at the structure of our courses that are offered through Accelerate Education. These are housed in a slightly different LMS than what you just saw from Mrs. Navy's course. That is Moodle. This is Buzz. Um, Buzz tends to be a little more user friendly, especially for our younger students. It's a little more intuitive, easier for them to navigate. Anytime you enter a course, you're going to see the basics of the course. Now, right now, this is a course that does not have a teacher assigned to it yet. Once a teacher is assigned, they go into this landing page area and they create their learning environment by taking the time to create a personalized message, providing their contact information. Everything that you just saw in Mrs. Navy's course, they will put that in here as well. They have the ability to personalize this to work exactly for them so that they have a presence within the course. Each course also starts with a resources folder. This is an introduction to how to use the system for every student. So it doesn't matter if they're enrolled in one course or if they're enrolled in four or five courses. They all have this resources folder. In this getting started section, you'll see it pops up here. They're giving you the basics of how to navigate things. We're going to talk about announcements, how to submit assignments, how to get in touch with your teacher, um, making sure that you understand every single component that you're going to interact with throughout the course. You can navigate with buttons up top. You can also scroll down. There's a lot of flexibility here for students. These are highly interactive and engaging with a lot of media. So we have a video right here that's going to give some basics. Each video also has a transcript below so that you have a written version of the audio being provided to every student. And again, we have more audio files down here as well. We're going to go ahead and go into the content. When you go into 
any of the modules, each module equates to a unit's worth of content. So there are multiple lessons under each module. When you look at these, you're going to see that there's a study guide that students will be able to fill out as they move through the module. This teacher module study guide is hidden right now, which is why we have the red bullseye through it. So that's not visible to students. It's only visible to the teacher. And as you go in and you open up lesson components, you'll not only be able to see that the very first thing we do is we state our learning goals for the students, making sure they understand skills. We have keywords presented to them. What we do encourage all the time is for our teachers to have a very strong presence in every single one of their courses. So this is a great place where our teachers would add in a video of themselves helping to make a connection to this information. We know that if we're not connecting it and applying it for our students, that sometimes it just doesn't quite sink in quite as well as we want it to. Um, you can see again in Mrs. Navy's class, she does an amazing job of having those videos to help provide that additional context. And they get to do that throughout these courses as well. There are manipulative components to each of the elements. So questions are posed. Students get to click the button to see answers as they go through. We make sure that we are taking advantage of bolding, highlighting. We also have this toolbar here to help students that may be struggling with an awful lot of reading that may need a translation. For example, if I go here and highlight, and press play, it will read for me. You can also highlight words and you can look for picture dictionaries to help explain what they mean. You can get a translation. If you click on the translation, it will go ahead and it will pronounce for the student. In addition to the content, the video support for everything, there are also assignments and quizzes. The difference between an assignment and a quiz is that an assignment generally tends to have more writing involved. Students are going to be working through something a little more comprehensive like a project or a worksheet. Whereas a quiz is an automatically graded item. So this is an example right here of an assignment. And back here, this is a quiz. The nice thing about the quizzes especially these brief ones that are just a couple questions long, is that they are automatically graded so the student gets instant feedback on those. Anything that is written that turns into a submission for a student, the teacher manually goes in and has to grade and provide feedback on. Communication between parents, students, teachers is incredibly critical to this. These courses are designed to be asynchronous in nature so that students can access them anytime, any place, work through them whenever they can possibly be able to be online to do that. But the true success of any online course is the teacher. And because of that, and because of the feedback that we got towards the end of the year about the importance of synchronous sessions, all of our teachers, K to 12, will be offering synchronous learning sessions for full group instruction that helps to establish a sense of community within each classroom, also gives teachers a chance to provide direct instruction, explain content, reteach certain elements. And then in addition to that, our teachers are always encouraged to set up specific one-on-one -on -one synchronous sessions with any student that needs a little extra support. And again, teachers have the ability to go through and modify and adapt content to meet the needs of every learner. So if someone needs a little extra remediation, if someone needs some enrichment, teachers have the ability to go in and put content that they have worked on in their class that they've developed over multiple years to enhance the courses that are being provided. And that is it so far. And I will be around for the rest of the presentation if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna continue on with the PowerPoint. Um, we're gonna move on to grading. Um, with the grading, uh, a lot of the parents will go into Skyward, which is where we go when we want to see our kids' grades. But when your student, when your child is on or in a part of the Norman Online Academy, their classroom grades do not go into Skyward. They are recorded in, they will be in Accelerate Learning or they will be in Moodle um, or Ingenious. 
um, and that's where they would go to get their grades. So the only grades that would appear in Skyward would be the report card grade, report card grades. So at the end of each nine weeks and at the end of the school year, those grades will be in Skyward for the parents to see. But again, the daily grades, um, quizzes, uh, tests, those types of things, that and the parents will be able to see in the other program. Um, and I'll get into how you'll do that in a minute. Um, the other big question was, are the courses just gonna be pass and fail? And they are not pass and fail. The students will receive a letter grade that reflects the Norwin scale. The next one, what does a typical day look? Um, I don't know that there is a typical day. Uh, a child's day in online academy is going to depend on the assignment, how many courses they're going to go into that day. Um, if there's a quiz, it may be if there's if it's you know it's if it's a 12th grade or we, let's just say here we're going to be in eighth grade. Let's say it's an eighth grade English course, um, but it's they're learning how to do research. That may take a little bit longer. Or if they need to read something, they're reading a, a narrative or something like that, and they need to read and then they need to respond to it some way. That assignment may take a little longer. Um, but if they're going in and that day is a quiz and it's a, an accumulation of what's gone on and there's a quiz, that one might not take as long. So again, it's gonna depend on the student and the assignment. There is no time frame that they must be on each day. Students can get on early in the morning or they can get on later in the, later in the day. Um, the one thing that we do encourage though is that whether it is early or late to set a schedule. Um, children work better with schedules. It's a plan. They know at a certain time they have to get on. It's school um, and it should be treated just like school. We're going to school. It's time to sit down. It's time to get busy. Those are our students that we see have the most success in the Norman Online Academy. For special education, gifted education, and 504 plans, um, the big question is, do, do we follow them? Absolutely. By law, we have to. And for the students' best interests, we want to. So all IEPs, GIEPs, and 504s are followed when a student is in the Norwin Online Academy. Um, that parents ask, what type of accommodations do you make? I can't ask, answer that question because for each child, it may be different. Depending on what the child's ability is or disability is, um, what their needs are, the IEP team is going to come together and that IEP team is going to decide in an online setting what are the accommodations that need to be made. They will set the SDI sheet that the, everything will be signed off on. I get a copy of that IEP, GIP, or 504. I upload it into the system and the teachers all have copies of that and they are required to follow it. Your child will also retain their case manager that they have in the building. So whoever their case manager is that you're gonna set up the IEP meeting with, that's who will remain their case manager throughout the next year. Um, and again, that's another positive, that's another benefit of being in the Norman Online Academy. So I would say the, one of the things that you need to do at this point is to contact the case manager or Dr. Snyder, who is on here this evening, um, to schedule an IEP, GIEP, or to renew your 504 to update it for a new year if it's needed, to schedule those meetings because you can, as a parent, do the pre-registration right now. If you wanted to go on and you don't have the IEP meeting done yet, you can still go on and do the pre-registration form, but we just can't start our classes until that NORAP is signed saying that we've changed the placement of the child from the, the building to the online setting. <clears throat> parent involvement. Um, this is what I was talking about where the parents involved and, and they can monitor the work. Every parent will get an account whether it's in the Accelerate Learning or it is in the eAcademy. You will have your own username and password and you will be able to go in and monitor the child's attendance, grades, work completion. In the Accelerate Learning for the fifth grade, the parents are also able to see what the assignments are, what they look like. So they kind of see more of what the student sees. In the eAcademy, they don't see as much of the course as they do the attendance, the grades. It's more of the data that they see to follow along with the student. 
<clears throat> okay, that brings us to the end. Um, I hope I've answered a lot of the questions that you may have come with today. Um, if not, we're gonna take the next, I think we have about a half hour left. We're gonna take the next half hour and answer any questions that you may have. Hi, can I ask a question? I'm going to call on people and whenever I call on you, I'll say the person's name and then you can unmute yourself and pose the question. And then Ms. Harris or Dr. Taylor will direct it to the member of the panel who will answer it. The first person is Crystal Marchluski. Hi, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. That was very informative. I feel like I actually had most of my questions answered by it, so thank you. Good, good. Um, I was wondering, um, for the electives, how do we choose, is there someone to help us choose which electives would be best for our children? How do we know how many we are required to have specific, um, depending on the grade? How does that work? And, um, and then sort of along with that, if we decide to switch from the online academy, say maybe halfway through the year, they decide they want to go back into the brick and mortar school, what happens with that? If I did see like Python multiplayer, I'm not even understanding what that is, but my <laughs> kid thought it looked super cool. And um, so he's been going to seventh. And um, so I'm, not sure if that is a uh, extracurricular in the brick and mortar. So <laughs> that's what I was wondering is what if they pick a, um, one that is with you guys that isn't in the school and or also do you guys help us choose and how many are required, things like that. Okay, great, qu gr great question, Crystal. Um, yes, the counselors do help you choose. Um, this is this is where the collaboration comes where your your child is still a Norwin kid They're still going to develop their courses and their 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 course schedule with their counselor So the counselor is going to keep them right on target um, Especially once you're getting up in eighth grade what you need and what needs to have to have to move on um, The counselor is going to make sure that they have all the correct courses and they will let them know how many electives that they need to select um, and the second part of your question is very important. So I, parents, please listen up. This is, this is a great question. Um, if you select a, an elective that is not offered at the school, at the brick and mortar, and you choose to come back, you have two options. One, I would say, is not desirable. Um, the one is, is that you lose it. Um, because we don't have it to put you in when you come back to the brick and mortar. So we can't put you in a halfway through another one and you get full credit. So you would actually lose it. That's the downfall of something that's kind of neat, but we don't have in the building. But you do have an option where you can stay in it. Um, you can keep that course and you can finish it and get the credit online, but you can come back to school and take all your other courses in school. So you have those two options, but just be beware that if you do take something that is not offered at the building level, that you will either lose it one if you choose to come back, or you can continue online with that one or two electives that we do not offer in the building. Once you would finish it, if it's a semester elective, once you would finish with it either first semester or second semester, then you would come back and you would have another elective for the other semester. So that was a great quest question. And, and so that would be considered your hybrid cyber student then, if they would go back to the brick and mortar, but then still choose to do several classes in your online. Yes, yes. That is more and they can do that even not in this school year, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And that would be like if my child is doing better in online math, maybe because he needs less, he, my child has a 504 plan. So I noticed at the end of last year, he actually did significantly better in math um, online. And I think it's because there were less distractions. He had significantly more time to think about mm -hmm. each thing. Um, and I was told that, you know, well, he actually can come to school 
regularly, even without COVID, without any of this, he can go to school for some of classes and have some classes in this as a hybrid student all the way up through now through high school. And is that accurate? That is accurate. You, you hit the nail on the head. Okay. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Okay. Good. Thank you. I appreciate Thank your you time. Sure. Okay. Our next question will be from CB. Hi, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, my first is about how orchestra is handled. If they're online, if they yes. do the Norwood Online Academy. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. O'Neill, is, or, is that, what grade are you, is orchestra? Ma'am, what grade are your child, is your child in? He's going into seventh. Seventh grade, so we would need Mr. Suman. Um, is there, I don't, we don't have an orchestra that is online. Okay. I, I can um, help answer, I believe. If, if, if the child is through the Norwin Online Academy solely, they wouldn't have orchestra class, but they do, I believe they do have the option to attend orchestra in the building, um, and then they can take the rest of their courses through the Norwin Online Academy. And that's okay. typically offered at the middle school level um, earlier in the morning, um, either first or second period. First or second, okay. So then um, my second question is, uh, my son was slated to take uh, pre-honors ELA and pre-honors global studies. Um, I didn't see that on the course catalog. Are those still options if he would do online academy? What they would do, uh, the children would sit down with a parent and the counselor and they would pick the next course that was appropriate in, in their trajectory um, of courses. Um, if it was something that possibly not called AP or honors, but there is a next level, they could put them in that next level course, even though it may not be called honors or AP. But that again would be decided with the counselor. Okay, and, and this might be falling into that category too, but um, he was also slated to take algebra, which I didn't see under the seventh grade list, but I saw it under the eighth grade. So is it safe to assume he could register? I see you nodding. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, our next questions will be from Livy Simmons. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, we can hear you. Hi, sorry, my name is Kelly Simmons. That's actually my daughter's Zoom account, so. Um, it seemed to me that there was, um, in the presentation by Mrs. Henderson, um, my daughter's going into fifth grade, and it seemed to be that the Buzz platform offers more asynchronous learning versus synchronous learning. Um, and I guess what I mean by that is I, um, there's not going to be as much teacher virtual interaction. Am I correct in assuming that? Um, and I guess, I guess my main concern is that I was under the assumption that she would have um, an actual class time prior to her completing assignments. Mrs. Henderson, do you wanna build that question? Sure. So. The course that we walked through when I was showing mm -hmm. everything, it is designed to be an asynchronous course. And by that, I mean that all of the content is there and it's available for students at any time. Sure. However, all of the teachers are going to be offering synchronous sessions at least once a week to pull the class together so that they have those live instructional times together. That's gonna be set up at the teacher's discretion whenever works for their particular schedule because we know that the teachers are also working full time during the day as well. So we don't have those specific times set in there right now. Um, but yes, there are synchronous components, one-on-one -on -one synchronous live sessions. Parents are always encouraged to attend those, especially K-5. to um, We want to make sure that you are highly involved in everything that's happening as well. I'm going to okay. jump in real quick, Ms. Oh. Harris. I just want to let uh, the parent know that we actually are at K-5. to We're working to have um, synchronous learning five days a week for our students K to five. Um, we are looking at going to sixth grade and higher, but right now we are looking to have a elementary teacher, a Norman teacher that will provide actual live synchronous lessons every single day in the core subjects. 
Okay. And I am glad you said that. Do you happen to know when you'll make a decision on that? Or is that something that is for sure in the works? It is definitely for sure in the works. I just don't know the teachers yet. They um, uh, haven't been identified yet. There's a lot of moving parts to that program right now. Okay. Um, one additional question is that the curriculum on the Buzz platform, is that something that's pre-designed or is it specifically developed by the Norwin teacher that's teaching that course? The Accelerate Learning is predetermined okay. and the teachers are facilitating it. The E Academy are courses that are developed by the Norwin teachers. Okay, that looked like it was definitely. And one last question I have is, you did say that they, you would provide them with laptops. I'm assuming that's an actual laptop, not a Chromebook, or because we got Chromebooks in the spring and I wasn't happy with that in terms of that. I, what kind of laptops would you be offering? Do you happen to know what types they are? Mrs. Henderson, do you know what types they were that you, that we? At the, um, at the IU, we have HP laptops. HP. HP. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for answering my questions. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, the next questions are from Davis. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Um, this is actually my son's account. It just says Davis. My name's Dawn, Dawn Davis. Hi, um, Dawn. <laughs> hi. I had several questions because there's um, a pretty big gap in between what was rolled out today and what was discussed last Tuesday. And then what was discussed Tuesday was changed for the Thursday school board meeting. And now it seems like this is a little bit different as well. So um, last week it was discussed that K through five would have the live virtual teachers and grade six through 12 would not. And I just heard Dr. Taylor say it is in the works for grade six through 12, is that correct? We're definitely looking at grade six, but I can't promise you seven through 12 right now. There's, um, it's, we just don't have enough teachers to do seven through 12 right now. That doesn't mean it's, it's not gonna happen synchronous lessons. It just means I can't do seven through 12 lessons every single day. And the, the synchronous lessons, because I'm concerned about eighth grade. My, my son is in eighth grade and transitioning to, into high school. There are very specific courses that were offered that looked like they were not duplicated with the curriculum for the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit online for the Norwin online program. So my concern is when the transition, if and when he is able to go back to brick and mortar, a transition from the curriculum, and I know you discussed that, Mrs. Harris, a little bit as to how you would transition and you could still take some courses online, but there is that cap of 7.5 credits. So if you are still taking some courses online and you do return to the brick and mortar school, but you're exceeding that credit max, would they still be permitted to take those online courses if that puts them over that credit max? And, and I think if I understood your question, what we would do is let's say they had two credits that they were completing um, and they wanted to complete online. Then when they go back to school, they would, we would fill their schedule because if they finish those electives, then we need room to put in an elective for the second uh, semester. So we're not gonna give them a double, double dose of, of courses and overload them. What we're gonna do is keep it at the seven and a half, move them back, and then once that elective is done, they would get another elective for the second semester. So they can't continue with the program they had online and take their course load that they would be taking in the brick and mortar school as the traditional Norwin in-person student, if that would put them over there. For credits. this school year, we would definitely permit that because of the situation with the COVID. We would definitely permit that for this school year. Okay, I was just concerned about having to stop a course midstream to fit into that seven and a half credit limit. And that was my concern because a lot of decisions are going into whether I'm choosing <laughs> this or not. And um, if the teacher isn't, because you said it was going to be a mixture of asynchronous and synchronous instruction. So if the student is taking a test and they do have a question while they are taking the test and the teacher is not live, so they're in their classroom teaching and 
how will that question be answered if they have to email the teacher and wait for a response at five o'clock and they're taking the test at 10 a.m.? Mrs. Bryan, would you like to answer how you would handle a student who had a question on a test? You're, you're muted. Okay, there you go. well, I can certainly say, and I think I can safely say for a lot of teachers that we, our emails are always open. Um, do I sit at my computer and wait for an email? That, like, that's not practical. Um, but I do know that when I open a quiz or some sort of assessment, it's open for more than a block of 40 minutes. It may be open for six, seven hours because, um, you know, with that, I mean, and especially at the high school level, we have students that are really all over the place who are taking online classes. They're working, they're, um, so they may, they may be taking a test not at 11 o'clock in the morning just because that's when my, the rest of my financial math kids are taking a, a test. But there would be a window of opportunity for online students to take assessments. And it, it would not just be a limited amount of time, it would be hours. So there would be plenty of time for me to answer a question. And we have the ability to extend the time if a student struggling or has a question on something, they can move ahead and come back I can answer the question and then I can open the quiz back up for them to to go ahead and complete that. Okay, that was my scenario that I was thinking of if the test was due that evening, like if it was a lot of the Google Classroom things were due by midnight that night. So if the test was due by midnight, but the teacher didn't get them a response to the following morning, they wouldn't be able to complete and submit that that test or quiz by midnight. So they would in fact miss the test deadline because they didn't get their question responded to. That was my concern, a situation like that possibly, where they would yeah, miss so, a deadline. Yeah, we, have, we totally have the flexibility to extend at that time and accommodate. And I just had one last question. Is there anything for the, um, Mrs. Henderson's walkthrough was, was very helpful, but is there something like a tutorial if the student is deciding to do online learning that will walk them through how to actually utilize this application and the different programs and everything that they will be using if they're continuing to do online. Mrs. Henderson? Sure, yes. Um, one of the things that we've actually done over the summer is we've built out a student orientation course that's going to be in Moodle that will help students that are going through these six through eight courses in our Moodle system so they can understand how to navigate it, how to um, complete assignments, how to upload content to the site for their teachers, um, who to go to for help, how to access our help desk, um, all sorts of things. We also have one for parents as well so that you can understand that system as well so that you can provide additional support at home if one of your students happens to be struggling with how to edit a PDF or making sure they're submitting their work. In addition, um, Accelerate Education and Buzz, the LMS, they have a large library of resources to help with that step-by-step. -step. So not only do you have that initial folder with that's called resources within each course showing you how to navigate it, we also have access to that library and we're taking those resources and we're going through them right now and compiling documents that are going to be helpful for everyone as well. And all parents, all students, all teachers, they all have access to our help desk and it is operational all the time. So we are constantly answering questions in there and we do use those resources as well and provide them to you through the help desk too. So you have access to us all the time. And that curriculum, how is that curriculum compared? Like if they are taking Math 8, how is the Norwin Online Academy Math 8 curriculum in comparison to the in-classroom Math 8 curriculum? Say for instance, for the second term, if they would transition, is it following the Norwin's you know, standard curriculum for the courses that would be outlined for the Norwin student in the brick and mortar school? Yes, the, the teachers that create the courses at Norwin, they align them to what they're doing in their classrooms. That's why our first go-to when assigning courses is always to a Norwin teacher. So that if they would transition back, 
we try to keep them in that teacher's classroom so that it is a, a smooth transition back. So there is definitely going to be that happen. There won't be the chance that they will be taking Math 8 taught by a Blairsville Salzburg school teacher that is following the curriculum of that district. Well, the curriculum, we, every, all of the courses are outlined by PA state standards. Um, the order that things are in can look different. If we do not have a teacher, that's why I went through the order that we would um, right. assign teachers. If we don't have a teacher from Norwin, they could get a teacher from another district. But again, they, those teachers follow the PA state standards just like we do. Okay, but it's not necessarily going to be in the order or exactly the curriculum right. that is being taught in the Norwin classroom. That could be a little different. Okay, because when you compare the outline of the subjects on the Norwin district website and you compare that to what was on the Westmoreland in your immediate unit, there were some that did not line up. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a complete easy transition, matching them up course by course. Okay, that was my concern. So thank you for answering that. That's all, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our next question is from Heather Coco. Yes, um, I had a couple of questions. Uh, the first question being that with everything that's going on this year, if your child is signed up for the Norwin Online Academy, is it a definite that at some point, if you wanted to, and it went back to five days a week, that you will be able to transition back to the brick and mortar school? Or is there a chance that you can be told no, because you signed up for the Norwin Online Academy, that your kid will not be able to go back to the brick and mortar school? No, you would absolutely be able to make the decision to go back to brick and mortar. Okay, also, um, my son going into fifth grade was placed into advanced math. Is that something that he, uh, he would be able to do through the Norwin Online Academy, that he would still be getting that same course? Yeah, again, the courses would go, you would, they would select the courses with their counselor and the counselor would look at the courses. And again, it may not be called accelerated, but they will find the course that best aligns with the next one, with the course that your child was on target to take. And that's the course that they would sign them up for. Um, and how is attendance, is attendance taken daily or is attendance based off of, are you completing the work in the time that it's meant to be done? Um, how is attendance taken account for? When the students log in, the, the, the system is phenomenal. Um, for every course that they're in, I mean, literally logs them by the second that they are in there. Um, tells us if they submit something, if they worked on something, um, pretty much if they just sat dormant, It'll say that they just sat dormant. They're, it shows no work. So it's, it's a pretty accurate accounting of what they do. So when the students are in, we do know because, and again, there's, there's a calendar that will check them off for attendance that they did sign in that day. Um, so what if a child is sick or you're out of town or something and is not logged in for a day or two? Is that, counts as an, is that counted as an absence? or are they just making up the work at a later point in time, or how does that? Typically with attendance, as long as the students are completing their work and passing their work, and, and they're getting it done in the time that's needed, um, attendance is watched, but unless it becomes very excessive, the students will be passing because they're doing their work. If we see that there's an excessive amount of absences and the, students, the student is not passing their courses, that's when we're going to talk to the parent, we're going to set up a meeting, and we're going to say, is this medical? Is there something going on? If it is medical, we can excuse things for medical excuses, just like as if they were in school, and then they can actually be granted extensions to get the work done if it was a medical excuse. Okay, and I know there's, it's different for every course and grade, but say typical fifth grader, about how much time a day are they spending doing their schoolwork? There's not a typical amount. Again, it's going to depend on what assignment they're working on in each course and what, how many courses they're going into that day. Um, I would say it could range anywhere from an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, four hours, depending on the amount of work they're doing in each course that day. Okay. 
and you were talking about the um, you were talking about the synchronous part. So there will be if he's in fifth grade, there will be times that he could possibly say that he has to be logged on during this time because it's live learning at that point. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next questions are from Lauren Stolko. Hi, this is Zach, um, her husband, I'm on her account. Um, the first question I had was if we were going to be receiving, if we enroll our children into the online academy, the same kind of communication that we've been getting from them being in the actual school storing everything. Like you if we're gonna receive the same stuff they're getting from the actual schools for the brick and mortar students. Oh, do you mean communications from the building or from each teacher? As far as what's going on with, you know, if it's going to go to five days or if it's going oh. to kind of, You're talking about updates from the school district. I'm sorry, we're having a hard time or hearing just, you. Just, know, the general kind of school information. Yes, you would. You're still a Norwin student, so your name and all the child's information stays in the system. So when all the news blasts are put out, they would still come to you. Okay. And then also, um, so we'll have a seventh grader who was for the pre-honors, and I know we've gone over that they'll find, you know, whatever best kind of fits that program. But if it would go back to five days or we would feel that, going back into even the hybrid is better. Is that going to be acknowledged as far as him getting into a pre-honors course if he returns to a normal school? Yes, and I, and, yes, and I would have that conversation with the counselor when you're picking the courses, that your goal is to be in the courses online, but if we were to go back, that your goal is to come back and to be right on track with where they were at so that they know that that's, that's the trajectory that you want to go on. But yes, they would stay on that same course. Okay, and then the last thing is, we do have four kids in the district. Um, and if we were to look into this, we have one computer at home, would we be able, not necessarily one for everybody, but would we be able to get additional technology elements to be able to help kind of take that one at a time out of the <laughs> equation at home of having <laughs> yes, those kids? Would. Yes, you would. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next question is from Cameron. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, I'm uh, Jamie Dumnich. I'm using my son's account here. <laughs> um, he's going to be going into fifth grade, so I'm, you know, a newbie parent that's very confused about everything, like everybody else is. Um, the first thing that I wanted to ask is if we complete the online registration that you said for the Cyber Academy. How, what is the time frame um, to when we will hear something back as to the next step? Um, I would say it, it could be a couple weeks. Um, I do have them, all the ones that I've received so far, and the counselors or principals have been notified of the students. But again, the counselors are not all in the buildings at this point in time. So when they do come back, then they will begin to make those to make those phone calls. So I would say there could still be a time frame until the, until the principal, or I'm sorry, until the counselors come back before you might get that phone call. Okay. And then in last week's um, Zoom, it was brought up about uh, the electives for fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Taylor had said that um, phys ed and health is a state mandated elective. For the fifth grade level, are there going to be other elective options also? Yes. Um, and we did put that on the website. Um, if you would go on to the online academy and then under curriculum, there's a tab for curriculum now. You're going to see one that will say, and I have it here in front of me so that I make sure I say the right thing. Um, it's gonna say, it's gonna say K to five course list. And on that course list, it is going to show you what, of it, what um, electives are available for those grade levels and you would be able to select those. Also on that curriculum you're going to find a chart and I would encourage you to look at the chart and go down the fifth grade column and it will show you what we're requiring 
of a fifth grade student? And then what is an elective? How many electives they may choose? Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to jump in real quick and let you know. Also, if you look at the grade six through eight course list, you'll notice in the course electives there, there are actually some electives that start in grades three and go from three to eight, some technology courses, some coding courses, a keyboarding course. So you might want to look at both the K to five and the six through eight. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And then my final question is, um, I know one other parent had asked about orchestra. My son is so excited to join band and play the trombone. Um, but of course, being in the cyber, he won't be able to be in the brick and mortar. However, if we would choose to transport him, as um, it was mentioned earlier, will we be notified of a time that yes. we would have to get them there and pick them up? Yes, they will let you know what time, if they're going to be in band, um, what time you would bring them and what time you would pick them up. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. You're welcome. Have a good night. Okay, the next question is from Lisa Rowe. Hello? Hi, Lisa. Hi, I just have a question. Uh, my son Travis is an eighth grade autistic support. Um, as far as the IEPs, I already did the enrollment online and I already notified his case manager. So will, do I still need to call and schedule the IEP or will somebody be in contact with me? If you know, I can answer case, that one. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, Dr. Sorry. Schneider. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi. Yes, your, your case manager will um, go ahead and schedule that meeting and do the IEP with you. Um, so you don't have to do any further calls for that. Okay. And as far as like some stuff in his IEP, as far as um, testing modifications and things he needs for that, how will that be handled? Like, with the well, at the meeting, Academy. at the meeting, um, you and the teacher will discuss, you know, what are the most relevant accommodations that will apply to when he's online. And if he needs extensions of time or whatever um, specially designed instruction that's in his IEP that will help him be successful, those will still continue in to the online academy. And as Ms. Harris said, she does provide a copy of that finalized IEP to the, um, the online academy teachers so that they're able to access that and follow it. And then your case manager will follow your son the whole way through while he's in the online academy so that um, you, know, you can do check-ins to make sure that you know, there are no issues or barriers that are um, impeding his progress in the online learning. Okay, I'll just wait and hear from her then to schedule the meeting. Okay, okay thank yep. you. You're welcome. Okay, the next question is from Frank Claycomb. Oh. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, um, Dr. Taylor had said that uh, sixth grade may be going to synchronous. Do we know when that decision will be made and how that will be conveyed to us? Yes, as soon as we have all of our um, parent surveys back, then we'll be able to look at the schedules and look at sections. So then you'll have uh, probably an e-blast going out next two weeks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next question is from Sarah Altman. Hello. Um, so my question is regarding the synchronous learning. Initially, when I looked at the eAcademy, the asynchronous style is what had kind of, I guess, maybe pushed me towards the eAcademy. Um, you know, with work, I work in healthcare, so I work different shifts. Sometimes I'm sleeping during the day and the kids are, you know, with their grandparents. Um, with talks of now moving to or having synchronous classes, uh, will that be mandatory then that my child has to log on and attend for those sessions or else they'll miss out on that content? Or will that content still be available asynchronously as well? Yes, I believe what the teachers are going to do are tape their sessions so that they're available for the students to view at another time. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, the next question is from Christy's iPhone. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. 
Okay. Yeah. My question is again for the sixth grade synchronous. Now, if we elected um, hybrid, are are they given that synchronous option through the Monday through Wednesday, or is this just if you schedule or sign up through the E Academy? All we're talking about here today is the online academy. Okay, and if you do online academy, is that strictly Monday through Friday and you can't do that just the three days and then the brick and mortar the two days? No, the online, Norman Online Academy is a full-time online academy. Okay, that's what I need to know. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the next question is from Shell. Sorry, I was on mute. Okay, my can son, hear you. Okay, my son is going into fifth grade. He's doing the two-day hybrid. My only question is in regards to band. He picked his instrument. Now, is that still going to happen? Or do I still need to get his instrument? Is band still going to happen? Dr. Taylor, this is in regards to the two days on, three days off. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually not discussing the reopening hybrid plan. We're only talking about the online academy. But if you contact your building principal, they can help you with that. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, the next question is from Jen L. Hi. Um, so I was unable to attend the initial um, Zoom meeting regarding the Norwin Online Academy. So I apologize if there's any repeat questions. Um, but I guess my main concerns um, were whether any of the election electives were in school and how they um, how they're going to get to school if they have to attend it at the brick and mortar. Um, I'm not sure that I understand your question. Are you talking about a student who may is in the online academy and in the hybrid where they're going to do half their online courses and they're going to come and take courses in school? No, uh, the, they would actually be in this Norwin online academy, um, but because I don't know how it works, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything that, like you said, like the orchestra or the band, um, if they need to be at the school for that or if it's not an option at all. Yeah, if they're in the online academy, those would not be an option at this point. Okay. Um, but if they would come back, that would be. Okay. And then also, I apologize, my daughter does not remember. She's going into eighth grade. And as I'm looking online, there are several options for the electives. Have they already chosen those electives? Um, if, if she was going to do the hybrid brick and mortar or when we go online, we would just re-choose all over again. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna go online and choose them. What you'll do is you'll have a conversation with the counselor and you will select those electives with your child's counselor. Okay. Um, I will let somebody ask another question because I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. I apologize. Again, I don't know quite what to ask because I wasn't on the initial one. Oh, I guess the one question is you're recording this particular one. Did you record the initial one and are, can we access that to go through and maybe I wouldn't ask you the same questions? Well, the initial one was not, but we did go through this basic information. Um, we're just for this one being more specific to the grade levels that we have covered. Um, but you can always give me a call in my office. I'm, I'm in at 630 in the morning. Um, so you can always give me a call there and I can answer any of your questions at that. Point. Oh, that would be yeah. wonderful. That would give me some time to take a look and kind of get a little bit more organized Absolutely. for you. I'll, I'm in tomorrow. So give me a call. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay, our next is Beth Klingensmith. Hi, um, I had a question about the Norwin Online Academy. Um, the, the course demonstration that we saw um, from the teacher with the biology course had a lot of interactive interaction online. Is there the potential that a Norwin teacher developing their course 
in that academy would be doing the PDFs that need to be modified or is it all more, I guess, interactive directly within the web pages? Um, I'm not sure that I understand what you mean if they're PDFs. So, so last, in the spring, and this was in the Google Classroom platform, I guess I'm just trying to understand what differences we would have in the online academy versus what we experience in Google Classroom. In the online academy, might there be teachers doing, you know, the uploading of a PDF that the mm -hmm. kids have to modify? Okay, so we could run into that again. There, there, the teachers can do a variety of things. Um, and, and I can let one of the teachers speak to this as to different types of activities that they may have the kids do online. Um, Mrs. Navy, do you want to speak to different types of activities that you have them do online? Um, a couple things that I have them do, there may be like study guides that they have that would be typical. They would type those answers into like a text box on there. I provide feedback. So I grade every single question and I provide feedback for them with what they got right, what they got wrong. And I know we had talked about like, how do you know when a kid is understanding and when they're not? I do it based on those. Um, there are different quizzes. There's different um, labs that I do that they would answer. And all of that helps me to see, um, you know, your child and to know whether they're understanding it or not. But the best thing that I can say is if they're having trouble, email, because I get back pretty frequently um, and we will sometimes go back and forth 10 times for an email to make sure that it's good. And I may write notes down and forward it over. Um, so you have a lot of options there, you okay. know, when it comes to making sure that they understand the material. Thank you. And then um, just a question regarding the electives. Um, is there the potential that those could become full? Um, you know, like we're seeing this list, but are we capping those courses off at a certain number? And then if you don't register early enough, you're kind of left with what remains? Or is what we see really going to be the choices that we have? You know, because I, I still haven't made a decision yet. Um, as I assume other people. Yeah, what you see should be the courses. That's why okay. we are training teachers so that we have more teachers okay. um, to teach the courses. Okay, great, thank you. And then All just right. um, one final comment um, regarding the fifth and sixth grade advanced maths, and the sixth grade is really what pertains to me, but um, I know we haven't addressed all of the advanced course um, curriculum and what courses will be in the catalog. But if we could give consideration to the fact that we're trying to accomplish three years of math, I think, in two years to make sure that those really are a focus, because I think they're a little bit different than the honors ELA or global studies courses. Um, I just don't want to see those kids get eliminated or struggling being either in too advanced a math or not on the right path to continue in that advanced track. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our last question, um, Crystal, um, you can do our last question for the evening. Hello, Crystal. Hi, sorry, I'm back. Um, just a quick question. So the kids who enroll then, are they assigned like a guidance counselor that they can access and they will stick with them through? And if so, um, are they able to do um, like a Zoom meeting with them and have like a face to put with them to talk to if they're struggling with anything? And then secondary to that, along with the Zoom, um, are they ever, is it always just them alone or are they ever like in a, well, I guess that would be like maybe the synchronized classrooms where they would yes. be with the other students. Yes. But other than that, they would just be just them doing their own thing? Well, I know that I have had teachers who post certain things and the students have to respond and it, it, they put it on a board and then the students have to respond to what the other students put up. So they interact in that way in, in thought processes and what they're thinking about different assignments that may be out. So they will interact with students in that regard. Um, back to your first question about the counselor, Every student retains the counselor that they have in the building that they are at. Um, so okay. if they, whoever their counselor is this year, if they're not switching buildings, they will have the same counselor and they can call them, they can email them, they can Zoom meeting them, they're still their counselor. Now, both of my children are switching buildings this year. And they'll be assigned to the, the counselor based on the alphabet. 
just as if they were going into the building. Okay. Um, okay. And then um, I guess, I, and then I guess um, one further question would be, we, we know a couple of, of other students who are also considering doing the online courses. If, if let's say my son's friend or my daughter's friend has, like they're in the same, they're in the same grade, they're taking the same classes. If they're doing that, would they more than likely have the same work or the same teachers that they would be able to, we could then hold sort of like school together here? So it would be sort of a little bit more like school or is there no way to guarantee that or request it? Um, I don't know that I could guarantee that, but if they're being assigned at the same grade level, there is a possibility that they may have the same teachers. Okay. Okay, I think that is all of my questions. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you. And again, to, to the parents out there, um, I answer questions all day long. So if you do think of something else, you can always email me or give me a phone call and I can answer any further questions that you may have. Dr. Taylor. Thank you all for attending tonight. We appreciate your time. I know that it uh, looks like Jackson was a, a late addition there. Jackson, if you want to stay online after everyone else leaves, I can uh, answer your question quickly, hopefully. If not, then Ms. Harris, can you can give her a call tomorrow and she can answer your question. So at this time, uh, we'll conclude tonight's meeting. So thank you all for attending. We really appreciate your time. And if you have questions, please call us. Thank you. And Jackson, while um, everyone's going out of the room, if you want to ask your question, go ahead. Hello, thank you for having the session. I wondered if there was a maximum number of students that an online teacher would have assigned to them. We are not ca capping the classrooms, but we would not assign the teachers an exorbitant amount of students into one class. Um, we're not gonna have the teachers teaching students all day and have 50 kids in an online course. So that, that will not happen. Um, we have different teachers and we have teachers that will teach the same course with different teachers um, so that the, we do not have an over um, amount of kids in one course. So is there an anticipation that additional teachers may be hired beyond what was needed last year based on enrollment? Oh, we already have teachers um, we, we've increased already from last year. We have teachers that are actively being trained um, so that they can do the accelerate learning and online learning um, for this year. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, with the meeting concluded, we're going to start removing people from the room. Again, if you have any additional questions, please contact Ms. Harris tomorrow and uh, she can help you. Thank you very much.